Welcome back to another Python Pi game tutorial. In today's video, we're going to continue with our variation of the snake game that we started on last time. And remember, this is the game that we're working toward making. So this is a variation of the game Snake, where you collect the red dots and avoid the bombs that show up as you do. And if you hit one of the bombs, then you return to the start screen where you can start over again. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at where we ended up last time, and then we can continue. So last time we started up with the basic window for a Pi game, and this is what we have so far. So this is our basic window. We have a green background with a caption up in the top left hand corner. And then we set it up whenever we click on this X button right here, it closes the window. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and continue with our game. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started by making the objects that we're gonna be using in the game. And we're going to be making these objects using classes. So the first class that we're going to make is for the snake object. So we're going to start right below the colors that we defined before. And I'm going to start off by making a comment. And for this comment, I'm just going to say game objects. And then we're going to create the first class, which will be for the snake. So to create the class, we're going to start by saying class. The next part will be the name of the class. So in this case, we're going to call it snake. Inside the parentheses, we're going to pass a parameter, and that parameter is going to be pygame dot sprite with a lowercase s, and then dot sprite with an uppercase s. So this parameter comes from pygame, and by passing it through the class, it's going to allow us to use some of the properties that come with sprites. So inside this class here, we're going to start by defining the init function, and we're going to do that by saying def for define. And then we're going to do two underscores and then the word init for initialize. And then we're going to do two underscores. We're going to do parentheses and this time we're going to pass self. Inside this function, we're going to start off by saying pygame dot sprite with a lowercase s dot sprite with an uppercase s. And then we're going to do dot two underscores init two underscores parentheses, and self. After that, we're going to be making some different variables that will serve as properties of our object. The first one is going to be the image. So we're going to say self dot image is equal to pygame dot surface with an uppercase s. And then we're going to do parentheses, square brackets. And then what we're going to put next will be the dimensions of our objects. So for the snake block, we're going to make that 25 by 25. And then we're going to close the square bracket and close the parentheses. After that, we're going to say self dot image. So here we're referencing the image that we just created. And we're going to say dot fill. And inside the parentheses will be the color we want to fill the object with. And in our case, we're going to choose black. If you want to choose another color for your object, you're welcome to and you would just replace black with whatever color you want to choose. If you want to use a color that you haven't defined yet, make sure you put it up here first, and then you can use just the name down here. Next, we're going to be creating a rectangle around this image so that we can do collisions later on. So we're going to say self.rect is going to be equal to self.image.get underscore rect and then parentheses. Okay, and this section right here is a basic template for any class that you're going to be using as an object. So if you're going to be creating more objects in your game, then you can just copy and paste this and maybe change a few things such as the dimension and the color. But this part right here is mainly going to stay the same. The next couple things that we're going to add are going to be specific for this class, and they're going to be things such as the score, the speed, and the direction. So let's go and start off with the score. We're going to say self.score, and we're going to set this equal to zero. We're also going to define a high score, so we're going to say self dot high score. And this is also going to be equal to zero. We're going to define a speed for this object, so we're going to say self dot speed is going to be equal to 10. We'll say self dot dx, which will be the x direction it's moving. We're going to set this equal to zero. And then self dot dy, which we'll use to track the y movement. And we're also going to set this equal to zero. So if you're creating your own game, a lot of these extra variables here, you may not put in all at once, but while you're developing your game, you may realize, oh, I need this property, and then you'll add it later on to the class. 
So don't feel like right away that you have to add all these different values. You can add it as you go along. All right, and that's going to wrap up the snake class. So the next one we're going to work on is the food class, which will be the red dot that we're going to collect on the screen. We're going to create the food class right below the snake class. So we're just going to drop down a few lines and we'll get started. And like I said before, since the first couple lines are almost the same for each class, I'm going to start off by just copying those lines. So we'll just go and copy those and paste it down here. And then for the name of it, we're going to rename it from snake to food. For the dimensions, we're going to change it to 10 by 10. And then for the color, we're going to change it from black to red. So there's no additional properties for this class, such as score, speed, or anything like that. But we are going to create one additional function for this class. So we're going to say DEF. And then the name of our function is going to be move. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to pass self. And the purpose of this function is whenever the snake touches the food item, we're going to have the food item move to a new random position. So we're going to do that by saying food dot rect dot x, which is the x position of the rectangle. And we're going to say that this is equal to rand int. And then for rand int, we need to give it two different numbers, a minimum and a maximum that it's going to choose between. So for the minimum value, I want to choose 50. And then for the maximum value, it's going to be width minus 50. So the reason I choose 50 and width minus 50 is just to give it a little buffer zone so that it doesn't spawn right on the edge of the screen or partially outside of it. We're going to do the same thing for the Y position. So we're going to say food dot rect dot Y is going to be equal to rand int. The minimum is still going to be the same. It's going to be 50. And for the maximum, it's going to be height minus 50. You may have noticed that I used a lowercase f right here, but an uppercase f for the class name. And we're going to get to that in just a second, but we're going to go ahead and finish up the classes first, and then I'll explain why I did that. All right, so that's going to conclude the food class. So for this class, we have the basic setup for the class, which are these lines right here. We change the dimensions of this object to 10 by 10, and we also change the color to red. And we also added one additional function to this class, which we're going to use to move the food item whenever it gets collected by the user. And the last class that we're going to create is for the bomb objects. So I'm going to start by just copying the basic template for this class here. And then we'll paste it down below. For the name of it, we're going to change it to bomb. For the dimensions, I'm going to change this to 25 by 25, the same size as the snake object. For the color, we're going to change this to purple. And that's all we're going to do for this class. We're not going to add any more functions or properties. The next part of the code that we're going to work on is taking those classes that we just defined and using those to make the game objects. So I'm going to start off by just making a comment. For this comment, I'm going to say where to draw game objects. To make these game objects, we're going to start with a variable name. So for the first one, I'm going to say snake. And I'm going to set this equal to the snake class. And then after that, we need to tell it where on the screen to draw this object. So to do that, we're going to say snake.rect.x. And this is going to be equal to the width of the screen. And then we're going to use two slashes for floor division. And then we're going to divide by two. After that, we're going to set the y position of the snake by saying snake.rect.y. And this is going to be equal to the height of the screen. And then we're still going to use floor division and two. So what this is going to do, it's going to take the width of the screen and divide it by 2. And if for some reason the width of your screen was an odd number, then floor division is going to return the next lowest integer. So by doing this for the width and also the height, it's going to place our snake object somewhere near the center of the screen. Next, we're going to create the food object. So we're going to say food is equal to the food class. So this part right here is why I used a lowercase f right here. Because in this case, I'm talking about the object that I created here and not the class. Okay, I'm also going to set the x and the y position for this object. And I'm going to do that by taking these two lines right here. And I'm going to copy those two lines and paste them right down here. So whenever we start the game, it's going to choose a random spot for the food item between our lower and our upper bounds. We don't want to make a bomb object right now. We want to create the first bomb whenever the player collects the first food item. So for now, we're not going to define the bomb object. 
What we're going to do next is create a couple sprite groups that we're going to use to manage all the different sprites in our game. I'm going to start off with a comment that says sprite groups. And then for the first group, we're going to say sprites underscore group. And this is going to be equal to pygame dot sprite dot group. After that, we're going to add the snake and the food into this group. So we can do that by saying sprites underscore group dot add. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to put the different objects. So for the first one, it's going to be snake. And then we're going to do the same thing, but for the food object. We're going to create a different group for the bombs. So we're going to say bomb underscore group. And this is going to be equal to pygame dot sprite dot group. For now, we're not going to add anything to this group, but we'll add some stuff later once we start adding the bombs. All right, and the final thing that we have to do to make these objects appear on the screen is add them to the redraw function. So right now, if I run the program, we see that nothing appears on the screen. So let's go and add a section to the redraw function, which will draw these objects on the screen. So down here in between win.fill and pygame.display.update, I'm going to add a section to redraw all the sprites. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to say sprites underscore group dot update. And then we'll say sprites underscore group dot draw. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to tell it which surface to draw them on. And in our case, that's going to be the window. So we're going to put win. And then we're going to do the same for the bomb group, even though we don't have any bombs in the group yet. So we'll say bomb underscore group dot update. And then finally, bomb underscore group dot draw. And then we're going to draw these on the window. OK, so let's go ahead and check our code now and see if the objects are appearing on the screen. And we can see once the game has started that we have our snake object and our food item right over here. And if I close the game and rerun it, we can see that the food object is in a different position because each time the game runs, it chooses a random location for that item. All right, so we're going to go ahead and stop here for this video. In this video, we created all the different classes and objects for our game. So in the next one, we're going to start by getting things to move. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.